Welcome to the ACDC Superimposed Circuit Analysis. Here's ACDC circuit number one. This is the circuit that we're going to analyze. C1 is the coupling capacitor. The most common way to connect an AC circuit to a DC circuit is with a coupling capacitor. Now capacitors will block DC and pass AC. Coupling capacitors affect low frequency response. C2 is a bypass capacitor. At high frequencies, the bypass capacitor will act like a short. Bypass capacitors affect high frequency response. Because capacitors act like opens to DC, here we can see the, the DC redraw circuit. We've got the 12 volts R2 in series with R3 with V out being across R3. To find V out DC, we're going to use Ohm's law. So we're going to find IT is equal to VDC divided by R2 plus R3. In this example, I got an IT of 1.33 milliamps and a V out DC of 4 volts. So for our AC analysis, we're going to start with the analysis at mid-band. Now ideally at mid-band, the coupling capacitor is acting like a short and the bypass capacitor is acting like an open. Additionally, the DC supply will look like an AC ground. So here we can see the AC redraw at mid-band frequency. So again, for AC analysis, at this point we can go ahead and use Ohm's law and calculate V out peak. In this case, we're just gonna keep it in peak. Our generator's in peak, so we're gonna keep the output in peak. And for this example, I got 3.279 volts peak for the AC component of the waveform. So here we have our output AC waveform riding on our DC V out. So you can see the AC is superimposed on the DC. So what we don't know, we don't know what the midband frequency is, what the actual frequency is. And in order to calculate F middle, we need to find the frequency cutoff low and frequency cutoff high. So at frequency cutoff, the capacitive reactance is equal to the Thevenin resistance of that capacitor. So at Fc, X sub C is equal to R Thevenin. Knowing that X sub C is equal to 1 divided by 2 pi Fc and that at Fc, X of C is equal to R Thevenin, we can manipulate the formula to solve for Fc. So back to the same formula, X of C is equal to 1 divided by 2 pi Fc. If, if X of C is equal to R Thevenin, we can substitute out R Thevenin for X of C, and that equals 1 over 2 pi Fc. Well, the F is cutoff frequency. Now we can uh, do some manipulation and solve for Fc is equal to 1 divided by 2 pi R Thevenin C. So for frequency cutoff low, we know that C1 is the capacitor that affects the low frequency side. It is in, in series with the output. So the Thevenin redraw circuit for C1 is shown here. We've got R gen in series with R3 in parallel with R2 in series with R1. So knowing that Fc is equal to 1 divided by 2 pi R Thevenin and C, we solve for an R Thevenin and C1 of 3.05 K ohms. And now we can solve for frequency cutoff C1, which in this um, circuit, we came up with 5.218 Hertz. So for the frequency cutoff high, we know that the bypass capacitor C2 is affecting the frequency cutoff high. The Thevenin redraw for C2 is, as shown here, 
R3 in parallel with R1 in series with Rgen in parallel with R2, giving me an R7 and C2 of 688.525 ohms. Now we use our frequency cutoff formula and calculate a 2.312 megahertz. Now that we have FC1 and FC2, we can calculate frequency middle. So F middle is equal to the square root of FC1 times FC2. For this uh, circuit, we've got F middle of 3.473 kilohertz. We also know, or maybe we don't know, that cutoff frequency should be equal to 0 0.707 of the midband voltage, or 70.7% of midband. So we've got our midband voltage sitting here at 3.279 volts peak, and 70.7% of that is 2.318 volts peak. So at the frequency 5.218 hertz, we should see an output voltage of 2.318 volts peak, and at the frequency of 2.312 megahertz, we should also see an output voltage of 2.318 volts peak. So here's our calculated bode plot. We can see our FC1, which is our low cutoff frequency, 5.218 hertz. We've got our frequency middle, which is right in the center of our midband, 3.473 kilohertz, and our high frequency cutoff, which is FC2, at 2.312 megahertz. We also know that at our mid-band frequencies, we should have 3.279 volts peak, and at our cutoff frequencies, FC1 and FC2, we should have 2.318 volts peak. So, so far, we've made a couple of assumptions. We made the assumption that at mid-band, um, C1 would be acting like a short, and C2 would be acting like an open, we also made an assumption that um, our output at cutoff frequency is 70.7% of the midband. And right here, we're going to use vector math to prove those two assumptions. So, with our calculated F middle, we're going to set our generator to our F middle. We're going to go through and figure out what the capacitive reactants are using our X sub C formula. And for this circuit at F middle at 3.473 kilohertz, X sub C1 is equal to 4.583 ohms at negative 90 degrees, and X sub C2 is 458.3 K ohms at negative 90 degrees. And we're going to see how that affects the circuit. So now we're going to find our total circuit impedance. We're still at the frequency middle, 3.473 kHz. And we've got a ZT of 3.04999 K ohms at a negative 0.25 degrees. So that gives us a total circuit current of 1.638 milliamps peak at 0.25 degrees with an F middle V out of 3.279 volts at 0 degrees, which is exactly what we calculated when we assumed that um, C1 was shorted and C2 was open at F middle previously. So now we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to roll back the frequency to um, frequency cutoff C1, our low frequency cutoff of 5.218 hertz, which gives us a X sub C for C1 of 3.050 K ohms at negative 90, and an X sub C2 of 305.011 mega ohms at negative 90. Now at frequency cutoff low frequency of 5.218 hertz, we can calculate our total circuit impedance. And here's the formulas here. I've got a total ZT of 4.313 K ohms at negative 45 degrees which gives us a total circuit current of 1.159 milliamps peak 
at 45 degrees. And we find that at FC1, V out at FC1, we get 2.318 volts peak at a positive 45 degrees. So the 2.318 volts peak is what we calculated before, but we had really no way of knowing the, the angle, the 45 degrees. But now that we can see that, that at cutoff frequency one, we should be leading by 45 degrees. So now we're gonna do all the same math, but at frequency cutoff two, our high cutoff frequency of 2.312 megahertz. This gives us an X sub C of 6.884 milliohms of X sub C1 and an X sub C2 of 688.386 ohms at negative 90 degrees. So again, we're gonna find total uh, circuit impedance, ZT, at frequency cutoff high. And here we get ZT is equal to 1.404 K ohms at a negative 26.001 degrees with an IT of 3.561 milliamps peak at 26 degrees and a V out of 2.318 volts peak at negative 45 degrees. So that, now that we know all of the angles and voltages um, at the different frequencies, we can go ahead and predict what we will see on our oscilloscope. So V out at F middle uh, with our oscilloscope settings at two volts per division and AC coupling, um, the blue channel here is our V gen and the red channel is our V out. So we can see that our V out is 3.279 volts peak. It's in phase with our V generator. Um, and that's, this is what our waveform should look like on our oscilloscope. And here's our waveforms at our FC1 low cutoff. We can see same two volts per division, AC coupling, the blue channel is our generator, the red channel is our output, and we can see that it's 2.318 volts peak and that it's 45 degrees leading. It's leading the generator. The output is, in reference to the generator, is leading. And this is what our waveforms should look like at our FC1. Here's our oscilloscope waveforms at high cutoff frequency. The blue channel again is the generator, the red channel is the output, and we can see we've got 2.318 volts peak lagging at, or minus 45 degrees, lagging 45 degrees in reference to the generator. So here's all of those waveforms kind of side by side. We can see F middle, we're in phase, and at the cutoff frequencies, our amplitude is down uh, it is 70.7% .7 of our mid-band frequency, and at low cutoff frequency, we're leading by 45. At high cutoff frequency, we're lagging by 45. And again, here's what the output would look like if we switch our O-scope to DC coupling. So when we flip it to DC coupling, we're going to pick up that DC component, that 4 volts DC and the AC waveform is going to be superimposed on the DC, so we would expect to see this offset, the waveform offset and centered around the four volts DC. So here's what we went over. Um, DC analysis, capacitors block or act like opens to DC. AC analysis at mid-band Coupling capacitors ideally will act like shorts and bypass capacitors ideally will act like opens. Frequency cutoff. At frequency cutoff, X sub C is equal to R thevenin. And if X sub C is equal to one divided by two pi FC, we can manipulate that formula to solve for FC using R thevenin. At FC, the V out will be 70.7% .7 of the mid band or 0.707 times V out mid band. 
The bold plot is a graph that represents gain versus frequency. Using vector math, we can prove that at mid-band, the coupling capacitors essentially act like a short and that the bypass capacitor essentially act like an open. And that V out cutoff is 70.7% of mid-band. At frequency cutoff low, the output voltage should lead the generator by 45 degrees. And at frequency cutoff high, the output voltage should lag the generator by 45 degrees. Predicted or calculated waveforms can be measured with an O-scope. AC coupling will display only the AC component of the waveform. In DC coupling, the display will have both the AC and DC components of the waveform, and the AC will be superimposed on the DC.